and also important on a day like today is that you always bring your sun cream as well. It's just, oh! Hi you guys and welcome to First Time Fishing with me Big Bird. Today we're going to be talking feeder fishing on Snake Lake. We've come down to the beautiful Tunnel Barn Farm and we've come and set up camp on Jenny's Pool. Now I'm all set up just down there as you can see. Put myself right on an end peg. So just quickly let's go through what bait we're going to be using. Well that's pretty simple. Just opted for the old uh, micros. We're just going to be using a four mil pellet that's on the hook. So pretty simple fishery pellets, off we go. And now let's talk tackle. So those of you who have watched previous videos of mine, you know how much I'm in love with the Free Spirit High S feeder rods, but we're gonna size it down a little bit today. After speaking to Simon, the owner of Free Spirit, um, we know that there's gonna be a new range coming out in August called the Helical, and that's gonna be their bottom range. So their CTX is gonna become their mid range. Well, that's what we've opted for today. We've gone for a CTX feeder light, 10 foot. It's gonna absolutely do the job over here. We haven't got to be casting massive distances. So a 10 foot is absolutely ideal. And hopefully we can get some good play in that rod. The reel that we're gonna be using, those of you who have seen previous videos, you, you're not gonna have seen anything different. We are always, always using the Daiwa 18 TDR 4012. It is absolutely incredible it is versatile you can use it for any fishing that you're doing absolutely anything distance short river anything it's my go-to i only own these reels i love them absolutely love them that's going down to a six pound main line now i think this is the pulse pro from uh, guru coming down to a guru xa stem and as we know from previous videos again the XR banjos do not fit the XSafe stems. And we want to use the XSafe stem because it means that if we get any breakages, that the fish are always going to be able to get out and they're going to be able to break away from the feeder. An XR banjo feeder, which is a size small, uh, coming down to a size 16 MCMB Preston hook. I've tied that to about a five pound line. So we're going to put a four mil pellet on. We're going to fill this bad boy up with some micros, let's get fishing. So I'm just gonna throw in a little ball of micros where I've been putting the feeder in, um, just so that we can try and get a bit of attraction for where the fish are. Perfect. So we're having a few little indications where the tip of your rod starts doing this a little bit. We don't actually want to be striking and you know and reeling the fish in until we see the tip go right round. So have confidence in leaving it there. What you've got to remember is the weight of the feeder that's on there is actually keeping the hook in the fish's mouth. And it shouldn't really come out, even if you leave it for a good five seconds with the tip coming round. And hopefully we'll, uh, we'll catch one in a minute and I'll be able to show you. Right, so we have our first victim. You can see the end of the rod going round and he's given a good old pull. Trying to go for the reeds. Just tightened up the, the clutch there on the reel. And let's let the rod do the work and absorb all of those thrashes from the fish. See if he wants to come up. See if we can get a first sight of him. Make sure we don't go under the platform. They know where all these snags are, I'm telling you. It's giving a good old pull, testing the old 10 foot CTX out. Keep it in there and the elastic that we've got on the end of the of the feeder is going to help absorb in all of that as well. Look at him. Oh, here he is. Oh, 
and he's in the net. All right, let's get him out and show you. So we have a beautiful Tunnel Barn F1 caught on the feeder on a snake lake. No pressure of looking at, at floats. You know, all you got to do is sit back, enjoy the weather and be catching stuff like him. Absolutely beautiful. Let's get him back and get another one. Right, let's get it back out there into the area where we've been fishing. But what we want to do is a nice little underarm cast. So we just rock it back and forth right into the area where we've been fishing. Tighten up the line but not too tight that we keep falling down the slope. So at the back over there, we've actually got a shelf that's around about this big and then it, sh and it sort of like slopes away from the edge. And if we don't get it far enough, our feed is coming back down, falling back down the shelf. So in this game, especially on snake lakes like this, especially with F1s, because they're clever, they're clever fish, we need to make sure that you are accurate. Make sure you're always feeding in the same area and that you're always casting into the same area. Make that little pile of bait that you've got. Make that little trap. Because if you're elsewhere and, and you're dibby dabbling everywhere else, then you're not actually utilizing everything that you've put there and there's no point in even feeding there in the first place. So that's the biggest bit of advice I could, I could give you if you're using a feeder on a snake lake. Victim number two, we're seeing it go round. And we're already on to another. He's not as big as the last one, but you know what? He's a beautiful little F1. Beautiful. Absolute little beauty. <laughs> Let's get him back. Right. Doing something a little bit different here. Just to prove that all the fish want are the micros that are in the feeder. I've purposely not put a bait on the hook. And we're going to see... If it catches, it's so nice sitting here. We've got a beautiful day. We've got wildlife absolutely everywhere. We've oh, we're having little knocks on the, on the rod all the time. We've got little tiny ducklings down here. It's just absolutely. We've got one kingfisher that keeps coming across. I don't know whether we'll get that on video. You know, they're catching over there. This chap over here's been catching. I could. I literally couldn't recommend it enough, honestly. It is just so relaxing, enjoyable, fun. Get out when you can. Make the most of it. My granddad would like to make the most of it. Unfortunately, he ain't here. And he can't. So I fully intend to make the most of it while I am. It's also important, also important on a day like today, is that you always bring your sun cream as well. It's just, oh, oh God, oh dear, as soon as you walk away from your box, <laughs> this little fish is proof you don't need any bait on a band or a hook when you're putting it in the feeder because all they want is micros caught on a baitless hook. <laughs> Let's get it back. Once again, another little underarm cast over to where we've been. Should have built up quite a bit of quite a bit of um, bait down there now. So, let's see if we can get another one. So, what I am going to do now is I'm going to just prep this margin with a few micros because I think we'll have a little dabble in the margin. See if we can. See if we can catch a lump out of there on the feeder. That is exciting fishing. So, quick chat about the margin. Feeder fishing in a margin. Basically, you're going to have around about probably this amount of line between your feeder and your rod. So, it is so important that you allow your drag on your reel to be able to let the fish go. Otherwise, you're going to snap your rod or the rod's going to end up going in. So... Once we've caught another one over here, we're going to go into this margin. I've been feeding it, been prepping it, and hopefully we'll catch something in there. 
right, I'm making an executive decision. I'm not actually going to wait until we get a bite over there because I can see fins all over the place. I can see vortexes in the water. So we're going to come into the margin now. And let's see if we can have some excitement in there. I'm just going to adjust the camera so that we can... Oh, there's big fish down there. trap is set always remember we've got to have our drag so the fish can swim away with it what's oh, indications already we we're on we're on we're on oh that was quick quite what we were after but we've got a little silver off he goes let's get back in there let's drop her in again just a few micros yeah we're on we're on we're on and he's another little left one. Beautiful. I'll tell you what though, the fins were bigger than that that I was seeing down there, so we'll have to get back in there. Here he is. Go and find your dad. <laughs> Drop her in again. It's such a great way to fish a margin with, with a feeder or a bomb, but using a feeder rod because you can have your pole, you can, you can keep cupping in all of your bait into the margin, etc. You're relying on yourself to not miss bites. If you're anything like me, I miss bites all the time. But with the feeder, it almost guarantees hooking when the fish bites. So it's especially late on in a match it's always a really good option that if you feel like you're, you're looking round, you might just need one more fish you might just need you need need four pounds to win it or something like that or four pound for your section you know in a match opting for the feeder and lobbing it into the margin might just win it for you we've all been there where we need that one more fish and we've gone and put it in the margin with our pole and the float's gone down, we've strike, oh, we've missed the bite. With a feeder, you're guaranteed your bite. When your fish takes the hook bait, because of the weight of the feeder, you, it's an automatically hooking rig. A bit like your jigger rigs and stuff, but because you've got that weight there, it's an automatic hooking rig. And it could be the difference between your section, between your win, or between your last fish of the day. That's it, he's gone for it, he's gone for it. Come on. Oh, there he is. I'm talking the last fish as well. Oh, I think that might just about do us. So, oh, anyway, so I hope that you've enjoyed fishing with me today. Here is the beautiful little F1 that I've just caught in the margin. And it could be an absolute game changer fishing a feeder on a snake lake. What can I say? <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it because I've had a cracking day. Anyway, all there is for me to say is if you're fishing this weekend, tight lines. <laughs>